The powers that be are hard at work, dumbing us to death to defend ourselves and fight against assimilating this dullness into our thought processes. We must learn to read, to stimulate our own imaginations, to cultivate our own consciousness, our own belief systems, to preserve our own minds. I'm asking scooch. How do I scooch? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to explain how to scooch. She kind of just, it's an instinctual thing. Okay. That's perfect. Thank you. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Greetings. And today we're going to be making sense of life through detachment. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it follows Adrian Brody's Adrian Brody's <laughs> Adrian Brody's character, who is a substitute teacher, and he takes a job for planned to just be a month at the school that's like the lowest, one of the lowest high schools in terms of overall performance, I guess, from the students and grades and everything. Follows kind of the day to day throughout the time he's there, learning the new students that he's teaching and the other staff that work at that school and their struggles and student struggles. And it shows you kind of everyone's perspective and what everyone's lives are and all the things that people deal with. Everyone basically in the movie that has speaking lines, they end up showing the tough stuff that's also in their life that you might not see, like the public doesn't necessarily see. Like even the principal, I think, of the office. At the end of the movie, she calls a uh, staff meeting and she's just lying on the ground. <laughs> she can't, like she's got her speaker that's connected to the, everything in the school, all the speakers in the school, and she's just lying down in her office and like she doesn't even have her rings on. She's kind of almost like playing with them. Yeah. And she's talking, she's like, it's one of those days where she's like, I just can't even be bothered to do announcements with standing up or sitting down. There's a lot of pain that people are carrying. I remember the scene with the counselor. She gets so upset with this one kid in her office. The kid just seems very detached. Yeah, which just I guess probably very for... apropos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both of these two people were suffering. None of them were villains. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is if you look at that as an outsider, you think obviously this kid is wasting their life. Of course she's, she has a right to be upset dealing with these kinds of kids who don't care yeah. every single day. And then on the other hand, and this is an adult talking to a child being yeah. so upset. Neither of these two people understand what they're going through. Yeah. They're not sympathetic, mm -hmm. right? Which is the issue in this school. If you contrast these two scenes, right? You have the scene of the counselor blowing up completely. Yeah. And then you have him first day where that guy is throwing right. his bag, get yeah. out of here. And he's super calm. And he's like, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. You were angry. I was angry too, but I'm here to support you. So here's a piece of paper, mm -hmm. let's get this show on the road, yeah. and calms this guy down. And in that moment, this very angry, aggressive kid who knows that he's threatening is using this force, right, to interact with this teacher, to intimidate him. Because yeah. I feel like, obviously, if you're coming from the kind of background that these kids are coming from, you have nothing. And yeah. a lot of the times, the only time that you can actually be listened to is when you're that way. And you tap into whatever resource you have yeah, to actually get a stage, voice. right? But this guy understands where this kid is coming from, yeah. right? When they had this parent-teacher meeting, and no parent showed up. Showed yeah. up. Yeah. Why is a teenager that way? Yeah, exactly. Who teaches a teenager not to care? Yeah. Who drives a teenager to the point of not caring? Yeah. To the point of killing themselves. You cannot tell me that someone who's in high school has to be responsible to the level of an adult, mm -hmm. especially without having had any kind of support system. I'm not expecting that the kid is, you know, supposed to be sympathetic to the, the counselor. Maybe one day when she grows older, she'll look back and realize that lady had a tough time. Yeah, and yeah. then she'll be sympathetic. But when you're a kid, yeah. you don't understand why parents are angry. Yeah. The older person who ha hopefully has more wisdom from mm -hmm. the longer years on this earth bears the greater responsibility. When Adrian Brody is character talks about there should maybe be a prerequisite for being a parent. Prerequisite in terms of considering do you have enough of yourself worked out and figured out that you would then be able to be a good parent and also are you just in a spot stability wise in terms of financially and wherever else that you could have a kid and then not have to be away from them all the time because otherwise if you're away from home all the time working then your kid does have to rely on its teachers to be their surrogate parents which is not good. That's not something a, a teacher should have to do or could be able to handle especially if all the students put that on them. Uh, at the beginning where he he says everybody looks for guidance yeah. you know and he says something to the effect of he knows that he he could have done with some of that you know i know how important it is to uh, have guidance and to have someone help understand the complexities of the world that we live in i didn't really have that 
growing up. He's the most empathic character in this movie, and yet he is the one who is the most detached. He has just one foot in the door, you know, waiting for that yeah. month to pass, yeah. and then he's out. I mean, of course, he's a complicated character, right? He doesn't see himself. He says in the end, you know, I'm hollow. You see me. You think you see me, but yeah. I'm not here. I'm hollow. There's nothing here. I'm a non-person, sir. You shouldn't be here. I'm not here. You may see me, but I'm hollow. He looks at himself in the most negative way, which I think is symptomatic of someone who grew up yeah. in an emotionally neglectful home or abusive or, you know, any kind of abusive home. You end up having these distorted views of yourself. He also has this huge fear of becoming his grandfather. We see that there may have been incest in yeah. the family. The grandfather most likely abused the mother. Who knows, maybe Henry is actually his son. He doesn't want to become, you know, like his granddad. What do you think, I'm a fucking pervert? Is that what you're insinuating? She needed someone to talk to her. Well, then why were you touching her? I wasn't touching her, you fucking... Sorry, mate. Shut up! Patricia. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not some sick old man. Is that what you think of me? And he's so afraid of who he could be, what his potential is. And I think that's fair, because I think at the end of the day, when you grow up, especially as someone who's as introspective as Henry is, you understand that you are a symptom of your reality. Mm -hmm. And if your reality was you grew up in a home with your mom who was sexually abused by your grandfather, and that's what you know, and that's what maybe you're socialized into, how high a propensity do you have to become that person? Yeah, it's interesting to think about a negative potential, because people are always talking about, you need to live up to your full potential, or recognize what your potential is, and, and you need to manifest your potential so that you can have a good life a meaningful life and you can be happy but what if you come from a, a lot of dysfunction and pain and the potential could be the potential to become like your parents which is something that you don't want to happen because then yeah. that's kind of like a, that's a bad thing or in your eyes it's a negative thing i think that's another tough thing when you grow up in instability and dysfunction is the idea of potential a lot of times is kind of something you want to avoid and maybe that's where you get to the point of that one student that just wants to get f's and join a band and be a model and not you know you didn't because she's like oh what about you you know, you're wasting away your potential. But maybe for her, she's like, good, because I don't want to end up becoming anything that I've come from to avoid being like my abuser. If you're growing up like these kids are growing up, it's really hard to conceive of what potential is in the positive way that people yeah. talk of it. Yeah. What is potential? How do I even get it? Yeah. The principal's husband seems condescending to her, so she doesn't even feel, and then they're both struggling. He starts breaking their stuff because he's also frustrated with just how soulless their, their lives have become, I guess. Their yeah. relationship, they're all in this situation. That's also maybe stuff you get from a breakdown of community too, when no one is able to actually have the time or the resources or the ability to help other people. The happy part of the movie is that Henry takes in a prostitute, they form a bond. He does have to let her get a foster care because it's not really his responsibility, which is tough for her because again, it's he's the one person who's been treated gently by him. In the end, you know, they reconnect and they still have this bond because they actually were able to get to know each other and want to help and support each other. He takes her in and then she she starts to enjoy making him food and taking care of him and everything. But when you have like a total lack of that, that's when you get to the point where you're just taking pills all day to get through. And if a fellow colleague passes away, just like, well, eh, you know, so it goes, you know. Yeah, I was just thinking of Meredith, you know, before she killed herself. You know how Henry says to the girl she takes, he takes in, he says to her, I think you've been effed up and used so many times that you've gotten used to it. Mm -hmm. Not just her, but everybody in this movie yeah. experienced maltreatment so much that yeah. they've gotten used to it. You've gotten non numb to it, you know? And I feel like before Henry, everybody is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And everybody has just submitted to their reality. Possibly Meredith might have actually hung in there mm -hmm. without Henry. But it's kind of like when, imagine you haven't had anybody give you the tiniest bit of love. And you're going through life just feeling like, oh, there's no love. People yeah. aren't gentle. And you expect that. And so every single time someone is aggressive, you don't really feel hurt mm -hmm. because you have that expectation that that's how people are. Yeah. And then this being shows up mm -hmm. and gives you tenderness, mm -hmm. you know, and sees you like she says. All of a sudden, every Every single thing you thought to be true is a lie. All of a sudden you have hope. In Meredith's case, there can be no true despair without hope. There can be no true despair without hope. When Henry shows up and treats her that way, she starts to see how ugly 
her yet her life is mm -hmm. when she goes to him and, at, and says please don't push me away you're the only mm -hmm. one who cares about me because I do think that people a lot of times can go through life go through a lot of pain and for survival's sake mm -hmm. maybe your subconscious pushes things aside so that you don't actually deal with them you know what you know what I mean mm -hmm. kids who've gone through trauma and stuff like that or people in general who've gone through hardships they block stuff out in a certain way like there's they psychologically maybe if the abuse is happening they psychologically block themselves out of what's happening yeah. to save themselves mm -hmm. and so I feel like Meredith was kind of doing that and so with Henry coming in and giving her that and pulling her out of her numbing herself yeah. she seeks him out to actually help her deal with her reality but then Henry's in that space where he can't really do help her and because he also says at one point he's like some days are better and worse better or worse yeah. but some days you also just don't have the energy for people some days were better than others some days were were not so great some days we have uh, limited space for others I think that was the last bit where she was just kind of like, okay, there really isn't anything. And yeah. so she kills herself, which is really sad. It made me really sad because I think when someone gets to the point of taking their lives, there would have been a long period of asking for help. I feel for the most part, when you are ready, truly, when you've gotten to that threshold, finally, you won't even announce it to anyone. Yeah. To anyone. When you do announce it, you're actually crying out for help in that moment. Yeah. Make me stop. Tell yeah. me to stop and tell me that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Meredith tried to do that when she goes to Henry and wants her to hold her and he doesn't. And so that was her last dish attempt at a lifeline. And that's also kind of the tough thing when some people make it harder for people after that, right? They come up with these rules for teachers to not be allowed to touch their students because sometimes well, somewhere along the way there were teachers that were doing that abusing kind of thing. Abusing power. Inappropriately touching students. Okay, new rule. Can't do that. Problem is though, then you have students that don't get any affection or understanding or support at home and then they can't even get it from the people that are supposed to take care of them when they're at school. So everyone just Anywhere. has to be totally disconnected from everyone else. Yeah. As much as we would like to think that your happiness depends on you alone, it is a very unrealistic view of looking at life and I think this movie reflects that very well. The movie kind of reminds you, at least for me, it made me just remember how, like it or not, all of us are intertwined and how all of us affect each other in so many ways. Understand that unfortunately most people lack self-awareness. You should really keep that in mind as you head into the trenches of second period. You'll meet him again at every age. That's where he's trying to be that mentor he wished he had as a kid because yeah. that kind of wisdom would be nice to hear, I think, from more people. And it's not really like a super cynical, oh, really, you think people are that bad? It's like, no, no, but there's just this understanding that it's not that people all will grow up, you know, it's like, all oh, those kids that were mean to you in high school, well, don't worry, everyone will be great to you in adulthood. No, no, you'll find those people. Some people will change, but then you'll have other people that either never really grow out of the issues that they have, you know, or people will develop other struggles later on, but it is good to have that acceptance so that you're not blindsided constantly when you just accept well yeah there's no getting away from people like that through lack of self-awareness they have this entitlement like the two parents in particular that really cause a lot of distress the mother that's you know saying you're expelling my student how dare you just marches in screaming at everyone and then the father that's saying his son that's causing fights he blames it all on simply ADHD that's yeah. the other thing and he says well he did some reading he did he some did, reading he yeah. didn't go to the doctor <laughs> Dr. Google yes right told him that yeah. the kid has ADHD yeah and that and so that's his scapegoat for his kids issues doesn't want to take any responsibility for himself he feels this entitlement that everyone should just take care of his struggling kid and he shouldn't have to do anything about it total lack of self-awareness of taking any kind of responsibility on yourself yeah. you just leave these voicemails these very angry voicemails because people aren't easing your burden, your, your burden enough even <laughs> though that was something that you took on and, exactly. and totally neglected one thing that really made me sad was when the grandfather before he dies henry pretends to be his mom <laughs> I was thinking about that, you know? Why didn't you seek some truth? for yourself. Closure. Right. Why didn't you do that? And why did you let him off? Obviously, he's still struggling with his mom yeah. in the past. He says to the grandfather when he's like, well, you know, why were you always so closed off? You're always so closed off. And mm -hmm. the grandfather says that mm -hmm. to Henry. We're always like that, even as a kid. Henry's like, let's not talk about the past. We remember it, remember yeah. it differently. Yeah. I don't want to talk about the past. You and I remember it very differently. Henry's past was dark because of his grandfather. The grandfather, what he did to the mom, it not only destroyed the mother, but destroyed Henry's own childhood. Yeah. That's why he was shut off. For the person who destroyed your childhood to ask you that. What do you need to be forgiven for, Daddy? Oh, those things, you know, the things I did. All you ever did was take care of me. Always looked out for me. Weren't you afraid of me? No, Daddy. 
No, sir. You know how you get sometimes. You get a little mixed up. Again, it's that self lack of self awareness that the grandfather had and other characters where what like, you do oh, what it's always put on the kid yeah oh, why, why, why are you, you so uh, why are you so stupid child so stupid or so cut, cut why, off why are you gonna, yeah. <laughs> not why looking are you at Fs? not remembering yeah. any uh, issues with like you know the kid finding his mother died from a drug overdose exactly. or the fact that it was like the kid alone with you know this weird situation where it's the mother and the grandfather and even if the grandfather doesn't blocks out or doesn't want to remember the things that took place should still know that clearly there was a uh, instability there yeah, it's something weird about the kid People need an idol, you know, because there are so many people who seem to have that whole, you have this expectation that your child is going to be the smartest human alive and yet you didn't contribute in any way. You didn't support them in any way and yet you expect them to actually know how to be what you want them to be without giving them anything, no guidance, nothing. And then you're angry at them for not performing yeah. to whatever standard you're holding them to. You should not have a kid until you find a way to love yourself. Same thing as you should not be in a relationship until you find a way to love yourself. Yeah. I think a lot of people get into relationships before loving themselves and then they have kids before they love themselves or their partner and then so it's just a hot mess of everyone hating each other. I feel like people who are like Henry who are seen to have that open heart, I feel like those people are really exhausted because when you look at it, everybody's just pouring their heart out mm -hmm. to Henry, the teacher. First day he meets and mm -hmm. they're out, she's just going on about her childhood and all this mm -hmm. that happened. It makes sense then why he prefers to be a substitute teacher mm -hmm. because one of the students asked, don't you want a permanent job? Isn't mm -hmm. it hard to? And it, and that one of the teachers as well, the red hair, like, don't you want some kind of permanency in your life? And I'm like, my God, permanency in your life would mean carrying the world on your shoulders. Yeah. At least this way, you're able to kind of like create boundaries. Yeah. The teaching one month and leaving, yeah. it gives you that kind of a break because I think it is really hard to be kind to the world, to a, a world and where you're the only kind person. If you're the only kind person, everybody's going to be gravitating yeah. to you as the blood bank. Eventually your reserves run dry and it yeah. takes a while to replenish on exactly. your own. It's a, it's a tiring movie in a very refreshing way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was stuff that we got from Detachment Film. But what did you guys think? Have you mm -hmm. seen it? Let us know. Leave a comment about what you felt about the movie or yeah. anything in general. Share your thoughts on our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And until next time, thanks Bye. for watching. It's a wrap. I tell you what I'll do, laddie. I'll have fuck your shit up tight. I'll have fuck it right up tight, up your ass, you motherfucker.